So uh, this is me at the end of May. I had already lost about 12 pounds at this point. And this video is another reference from the end of May. And this is how me and my husband take our pictures. I take a video and then I screenshot from the video. But it is pretty much the only footage I have of myself when I was around 200 pounds other than my cleaning videos you can look at the ones from april to really see and then this is me now in the mid 140s so a little over 60 pounds down you can definitely tell the difference because you can see in the previous video where i was taking the picture with my husband i was like bigger than him and now i am much smaller so let's get in today's video what is up my friends welcome back to my youtube channel my name is emily ray if it is your first time here and if it's not your first time here thank you so much for coming back to my channel i'm sure you can tell by the title of this video and today i am doing a weight loss video update i'm going to tell you what weight i started at what i weigh now the things that i did how i ate did I exercise, um, what habits and lifestyles that I cut out, well I guess like lifestyle habits that I cut out along my journey, and how I plan on staying this weight for the rest of my life. I'm not even going to doubt myself because if I let the doubt creep in, it wins, so I'm not even going there. My house is a little bit cluttered, but it is what it is. This video is not about having a clean house. So, I'm going to take a seat and have a little chat with you all. Let me go ahead and tie my hair back because... the heck? I told myself that I was going to wear my hair down, but literally... That's been five minutes ago and I'm already in the way with it because clearly I have a lot of hair. Okay, much better. Am I crooked? Is this thing on? Just kidding. <laughs> no, no, it's on. Hey! Okay, she needs to hush because I ain't got that much battery on this thing. Okay, so let me just start by saying I am not a dietitian. I am not a personal trainer. I am not a doctor. I am just talking about my personal journey and the things that I did on my personal journey to get to where I am today and what I plan on doing moving forward. And also, let me say, while I'm about to say that this is my weight loss journey understand that my entire life has been a weight loss journey. I'm 32 and it seems like I was probably nine years old when my unhealthy relationship with food started and I was diagnosed with a binge eating disorder earlier this year. However, I've had it probably since I was nine years old. Um, and I don't know if that binged from, or if that, I don't know if that branched off from having um, a traumatic childhood, a toxic childhood, um, an unhealthy relationship with food, sometimes not knowing when my next real meal would be. But yeah, and then I also would seek comfort with food and I still do like I was having a hard day yesterday and I was like I'm so ill I want some ice cream and I did not get the ice cream um so moving forward my weight loss journey this time started in May I went to the doctor and I was 210 pounds not only had I never been over 200 pounds in my life, not even when I was 
pregnant. Like when I went in to have my child, I was not 200 pounds. I was over 200 pounds. I was 210 pounds. And I already knew going into the doctor, like this, that's specifically why I went is because of my weight. Like something is not right. So that's when I got diagnosed with the binge eating disorder and she did put me on Vyvanse. I have not binged since then. Vyvanse completely helped me to break that cycle of the binging that I was on. And I do know that this is a lifelong I'm going to call it a battle because that's what it is. And I know that in the future, if I fall down that terrible cycle again to where I'm binge eating and rapidly gaining weight, like 20 pounds a month rapidly gaining weight, um, then I will go to my doctor and we will revisit Vyvanse. So currently I am not binging. And I have not binge since then. There have been a couple of times where I overate, but I have not binge. And my binges, my binges would look for me. Sometimes I would go into my fitness pal after I would binge, and I would like type in all the food that I ate that I could remember and kind of guess about how many portions I had. And there'd be like 7,000 calorie days. And I would feel so disgustingly full, but I craved that feeling. I loved it. And that's why I got to 210 pounds. That feeling for me was comforting in a very sick, unhealthy way. And then like after realizing I'd eaten 7,000 calories, I'd be like, well, like, F it. Like, let's, let's keep this train, let's keep this train rolling. And I would eat more. Sometimes I would eat so much that I would get sick and throw up. And then I would just continue to eat. So, that is how I got to the weight I was at. My binging disorder was completely out of hand. And at some point, you have to, you have to get help. If you have a binge eating disorder, sometimes you can't do it on your own. And I don't think that that is cheating. And I don't think that that discredits my journey. So, I have kept track of my weight and my fitness pal. And I'm just going to show you... So that you can see... That because people like every day I see someone and they're like, Oh my god, you lost so much weight so fast! and I'm like, No, I didn't. I've been dieting since May. You just now noticed. I think, the, I think the last 20 pounds, I think going from 165 to the mid to high 140s was the biggest change in my body. I think that's when people really started to notice, like, Oh, she's gotten pretty thin. Okay. All right, so hopefully you can see this. You know what? Let me just hold the camera and go over this. Okay, so here you can see. Whoops. Do I need to go? Oh, I need to go this way. Okay. You can see how long I have been tracking my weight. So, let's go back to the beginning of 2020. So, the beginning of 2020, I was 150 pounds. And then you can see my weight slowly start to increase. I got into the 160s. I got into the 170s. Stayed there for a while. Then I creeped up into the 180s. Hit 190. Where did I hit? Hit 190 there. And then came back down a little bit. And then it was up and up from there. So here's where I went to the doctor and started the Vyvanse medication. And it, 
you can see a little a little over a month I had lost 14 pounds 10 days later another two pounds a few weeks after that another two pounds so it was pretty gradual so you can see I'm getting into the 170s got into the 160s got into the 150s and then um, January 2nd I was 148 and then right now I am at 146 so I have not, not entered that in but you can see the days that I checked in and checked my weight and it was a very gradual process it wasn't it did not happen overnight um, I also have some <laughs> pictures from um, previous videos that show how big I had gotten and then of course I took some pictures today I did not take any of the like back shots I'll um, enter a photo here of what my back looked like at 210 pounds and I had did not take a picture of my back today I just took some pictures with some clothes on but you can you can see the difference so when I really got the most results was when I decreased my caloric intake dramatically and I was eating around 1400 calories a day and I still am eating in the mid to high 1000s I'm trying not to go over 2000 and I'm loosely tracking I'm not like being very anal about everything but I'm but I'm trying to pay very close attention to what I put in my body because the weight I'm at now I'm happy with I don't want to lose any more weight but when you have under eight for so long when you get to your goal weight you can't just go back to eating normal you have to continue or you have to slowly start adding food back in and tracking your progress tracking your weight your measurements and making sure that your body is not reacting in a way where it's going to start hoarding the food that you're eating so that's where the point that's where I am right now so I am eating in the mid to high 1000 calories and things are going pretty good this is like literally just this week I have started doing this so I can't I'll have to give an update in a few weeks as to you know did I have to drop back down in calories did I gain weight at the beginning when I stopped under eating um, and I'm gonna say under eating because it is under eating like you're not gonna lose weight if you're not in a calorie deficit as far as exercise I wanted to exercise I wanted to do cardio consistently um, however I was not very committed and I have been trying to get like 12,000 steps a day which is around five miles for me yesterday I got right under 10,000 because I had planned on coming home and doing the elliptical and Callie had her puppies so I was with her so like yesterday these are my steps and it's easier for me to get my steps in on days that I worked so I did work yesterday so these steps are from work and being around the house so I walked four miles total and like I said I did not hit my goal yesterday because of Callie having her puppies and she had five girls and I will update y'all soon on her and then um, this is Saturday I thought I got my steps in on Saturday my phone says I didn't weird so on Saturday I only got focus almost 11,000 a little over four and a half miles and I did do the elliptical on Saturday 
Um, on Thursday, I got almost 13,000, which was over five miles. And I did the elliptical a little bit on Thursday. So consistently trying to get a decent amount of steps. Moving forward, I am going to hit 12,000 steps every day, which is five miles, at least 12,000, regardless of whether that's elliptical or work or going for a walk, but that is my goal moving forward. And I do want to start doing the elliptical at least four times a week because it really helps me focus. It helps my mind clear. And I am going to be very aggressive about May. Sorry, my phone or my camera died. So I'm going to be very aggressive about maintaining this weight. I feel great. I feel like I can do anything. I am happy when I look in the mirror. I'm happy with how I look naked. I feel sexy. Um, I completely lost my backside. I have absolutely no glutes at all. So I'm going to be working on that. I want to add some strength training in to my workout regimen, if you even want to call it that. Um, and I, yeah, like I said, I do want to start doing the elliptical more for not only my physical, but my mental health, the elliptical, walking. Um, I like to do the elliptical because I don't have to leave my house to do it. So I can literally be spending time with my family and my dogs while I'm exercising. I kind of want to get a treadmill for my, for my back room as well, but I've been looking on Facebook Marketplace for those, um, and I have not found one just yet. So, yes, moving forward, I am going to be doing some more strength training, whether that's body weight stuff, whether it's lifting weights, and I have weights at home, and I just ordered a 30-pound kettlebell today. Something that I think will really help with my backside is kettlebell, kettlebell swings. I really like those. And if you do them just right, you're going to fill them in your backside. So, yes, so moving forward, more aggressive with my workout regimens. And I'm just going to be aggressive, period, about maintaining this because I love it and I feel great and I want to feel like this for the rest of my life. Something I do want to talk about is willpower. So yesterday I knew that I had eaten a sufficient amount of food I did not need to eat anymore. And like around 6 o'clock, 6.30, I started getting that inkling to go to the kitchen and get some snacks and one thing would lead to another and I would probably add another few hundred calories onto my daily caloric intake. So I just had to straight up have a conversation with myself like I'm a child and tell myself no, like you don't need it. You've eaten a good amount of protein. Yesterday I had, I had a salad, I had chicken, and then for supper I had some chicken wings and what else did I had? I had some I had a couple of apples for snacks. So I knew that there's no way I could be hungry. Like I didn't starve myself yesterday. I ate good, healthy, nutritious foods. Um, I had drank water. So it was just me like being bored. And then Callie going into labor did help distract me. Um, but she did not go into labor until like a little bit later. So, willpower is a muscle that must be exercised just like the muscles in your body. The more you have conversations with yourself and like rational conversations with yourself, like in telling yourself you're not hungry, you're just bored, and no, you don't need that. No, you don't want that. And you don't always have to do that, like on special occasions, yeah, on celebrations, have some cake, eat the junk, 
whatever, but it can't be every day. It cannot be every day, and it can't be the majority of days. It's just, it just is what it is. And a couple of things that I had to cut out was alcohol. And on special occasions, I may have a drink. I normally, I think, maybe once I've ordered a second drink and then just like wasted it. I know that at the Christmas um, celebration with my associates, we had a drink. Me, I had a drink. And then... When was another time that I've drank? On Christmas Day, my sister poured me a glass of wine and I took a couple sips and then I just didn't even drink it. I ended up pouring it out because now that I don't drink often, I have such an intolerance for it and I kind of can notice this like ick feeling. So my eyelash keeps like sticking together. So cutting out alcohol like 99% of the time was a big life change because there's been weeks and months where I've drank every single day. So those are empty calories. They're not needed. Find other ways to relieve stress. There is a way <laughs> to relieve stress other than alcohol and I'm not going to say what it is. Use your imagination, but I'm not going to name it and i'm not going to say whether or not i indulge in it but just know that um there are ways to relieve stress other than alcohol and like the exercise the elliptical the cardio that is a good way to relieve stress as well working out period is a good way to relieve stress um reading for me, I've been reading a lot lately and that has been a form of meditation for me. It takes me somewhere else. It distracts me. It puts me in another in another place uh, where I'm not able to think about like things that are worrying me, things that are causing me anxiety. So that's a good way for me to handle my stress and kind of check out without using alcohol. Um, and then something else that's big and probably going to hit home for a couple of you guys is Starbucks. You got to give it up. So I don't let myself get Starbucks more than twice a week. And I used to go to Starbucks two or three times a day. And I'm not exaggerating. I am not exaggerating. At least once a day. For the most part, twice a day. And on a crazy day, three times. It was insane. So many calories of drinks. And I had got to where I would get a cheese danish every time as well. There was so good i loved how the like the cheese would like stick to the roof of my mouth <laughs> wow it sounded really weird me just saying that out loud but whatever so things that i had to cut out alcohol and my starbucks addiction i do go a couple of times a week um main like sometimes on my off day i might go and get something but i will get like a iced coffee with sugar-free um, vanilla syrup and oat milk and I don't get any of the sweets. I don't get a cheese danish. I don't get muffin. I don't do none of that anymore. If I go to Starbucks, it's to get a coffee and I try to get a very low calorie coffee at that. So I can't really think of anything else. I do try to limit my um, sugar intake not and that's like added sugar intake like not necessarily fruits um, but my added sugar intake I really try to limit so I don't I'm not eating candy every day I'm not eating cake every day I'm not eating eating cookies every day that's just is what it that just is what it is I mean I'll have a smoothie and yeah the smoothie is gonna have tons of sugar in it from the fruit um, but that is not what I'm focusing on. I'm focusing on the added sugar. I can't think of anything else right now. I think I've kind of went over everything. How I'm eating. Lifestyle habits that I've had to change. 
and so yes moving forward i am still monitoring what i eat i'm not going to be picking out i'm not going to be binging if i do i'm going back to the doctor before like before it gets out of control i don't care what i have to do what i have to pay feeling this feeling that that i have of being comfortable within my own skin and in my own body like there you cannot put a you can't put a price on it so i will do whatever it takes to maintain this um yeah, I'm going to be making sure that I get my 12,000 steps. I'm going to be um, exercising more and I will track it all so that I can update you with my progress and show you the receipts so it's not just like me rambling and looking. No, I have the receipts. Um, so, yeah, that's it. That's my weight loss journey of 2022 and going into 2023 i am on a weight maintenance journey which is just as much of a journey for me because it is hard out here it's hard out here or a pimp like me so because it's easy it is easy to fall off that wagon but you also need to be realistic and know that there's going to be days where you overeat or you eat something that is not considered the healthiest and so what what's important to register in your mind is doing something one day is not what's going to cause harm doing the same things over and over throughout the day over and over every day for weeks for months for years that is what is going to cause harm that is what is going to spin you into a downward spiral and you have just got to stop spinning you've got to get a hold of yourself you've got to have real hard conversations with yourself and you've got to be willing to tell yourself no hell no you gotta look at yourself in the mirror and sometimes you just gotta tell it like it is to yourself and it's not always pretty but i will update you guys let's see today is january the 9th so i will update you guys at the beginning of february and let you know what i'm currently weighing in at the things that i'm doing was i successful in my Goals that I've set for this month on getting 12,000 calories or 12,000 calories. Do you see what I did that there? I'm going to get 12,000 12, steps, which is the five miles. Um, I'll let you know, was I successful in working out four times a week? I'll lay it all on the line and we'll see where I am in a month. And hopefully you guys got something out of this video maybe a little bit of motivation to start a journey of your own or continue the journey that you're on but i feel great i mean i would not i wouldn't change anything about where i am right now physically other than i wish that i didn't have a pancake bottom but whatever i really don't care I really don't care. I mean, I'll try to lift some weights and pump it up some, but if I don't, I'm so happy with myself. So, and I was not happy with myself previously. But I will talk to you guys soon. Um, you'll see me before this update video, so I'll see you then. But it will probably not be... A weight loss video I really have some deep cleaning I need to do in my house and I also enjoy doing like what I eat in a day videos so maybe I'll try to record some of those I have like started recording some and then like by the end of the day didn't didn't follow through so I'm like well I literally wasted recording the first half of what I was eating so 
anyway 2023 is a year of big things we're going to work hard we're going to meet our goals and maintain our goals it is ours for the taking and we're here to take it i'll see you guys in the next video bye